Hello and welcome to SPS IPC Drive. Keyword, digitalization. How do we experience digitalization in our daily lives? By having our smartphones with us and simply using the apps we need to carry out our tasks. And I bet that almost every one of you has at least one of these devices with them today, which offer more computing power that was needed back then for the moon landing. So what can you do with all those apps? You can use the navigation feature, of course, to make it to the fairground. You might book your train journey home for tonight, so you'd be back home with your family on time. Maybe you were so intrigued by the Siemens show here at SBS IPC Drive that you might want to purchase some additional shares. Or you will rearrange your whole schedule to make it possible for your entire team to come to the Nuremberg Trade Fair. You see, the applications running on these smartphones are as versatile as your personal tasks. What is behind this, however, is not so much the entire app ecosystem as the networking that forms the basis for realizing all these tasks. We have access to the Internet everywhere, and we have access to powerful databases and IT systems everywhere, which brings together all the information we need for these apps for these processes. And then there are the billions of sensors connected transporting data from the field level into the cloud in real time. Well, what do we need this sensor technology for? Imagine you have been opening your railway application and you want to check whether your train is on time or whether you might need to take an alternative route. This is where sensors come in, which are needed to report the position of the train from the field level to the IT system. In real time, of course, because you don't want to find out half an hour later that you would actually have caught your connecting train. That means connecting sensors with IT systems with the digital models. Here, the schedule is the digital model. Really makes sense and generates the genuine added value here. It's exactly the same in industry now. Here too, it makes sense to connect and synchronize sensors from the field level with IT systems. Let's take, for example, robotics. Such a robot has certain acceleration times for its gripper arm and needs a certain time to cover these various positions. The moment we discover, via sensors, that this movement pattern changes slightly, this can be an indication that the robot needs maintenance. And if you know it well in advance, you can also schedule it where it does not interfere with the production program. A second example, you are transferring all the quality parameters of a product into the cloud. For example, MindSphere at Siemens. And then you can use big data or even AI, artificial intelligence, to analyze these quality parameters on site based on new correlations. We can, for instance, also upload a picture of the product into the cloud and have it analyzed as well. This increases product quality and reduces cost. A third example, with wireless locating, it is possible to lead maintenance staff exactly into the part of the plant where a maintenance process is to be carried out, where an installation is to be repaired or a unit needs to be replaced. And since we know exactly where the individual employees are, we can also send them all the documents needed to carry out the task at hand, right onto their tablet PC. As you can see, there is also a lot of added value here by combining the field level, the sensors, directly with the digital twin. And here again, the basis is a powerful, flexible and secure industrial network. The requirements for these networks, however, differ substantially from what we use in our everyday lives. Take the example of highest availability, for instance. Of course, when you are watching a soccer match at home on your smartphone and the internet breaks down, this can be a disaster depending on what team is playing and how well they are playing. But if it happens in a chemical plant, it is a very, very critical issue, which is to be avoided by all means. I which means maximum availability is one of the basic requirements for industrial communication. Secondly, we need strong real-time communication so that the machines can really synchronize at the same rate and robots can really jointly work on the same workpiece.
We have a lot of mobile equipment, but also Wi-Fi used in factories needs to have an industrial character in order to be able to carry out our safety applications via Wi-Fi, for instance. In other words, the emergency stop switch, which this vehicle is equipped with and which has been approved by the technical inspection body, really needs to be able to perform this safety function. Thirdly, billions of euros have been invested in existing installations. You all have factories, machines, installations in your companies. And just because there is a bit of digitalization going on right now, it doesn't make sense to replace all these installations. We need to come up with solutions how we can connect the existing installations to the digital systems. There is a lot of equipment in the factories, such as this bumper as a workpiece, but also tools, containers, means of transport, which on the one hand have a digital twin. In other words, where there is relevant information in the digital systems, but which themselves are not able to communicate, simply because they are not equipped with a processor and an Ethernet interface. And here again, we need technology to bring it all together. And last but not least, security. Actually, it should have been the very first point, because without security, we needn't think about industrial Internet of Things applications in the first place. Imagine your production plan is available on the Internet. Everyone can access it, especially your competitors, or the recipes you are using can be accessed by your competitors. This must not happen at all, and therefore security must be designed into the industrial network solution from the outset. The question is what kind of of technology is the right one. And you might be wondering what that has to do with those yellow rubber boots. The answer is you can do all kinds of things with those yellow rubber boots. You can walk through a puddle wearing those boots. I could be standing here on the stage in those yellow rubber boots. I could dance with Christine here on the stage, but she'd probably refuse and say we shouldn't do that. Why? Simply because there are different kinds of shoes, different tools for different requirements. And that also goes for industrial communication. Here again, the requirements are so diverse that there is not just one suitable technology or component. There are rather a whole lot of different components and technologies we need. And this is the reason Siemens is not offering only one product or technology, but more than 5,000 different products for industrial communication. Let's take, for example, Profinet. This is a technology that has been tried and tested for many years and ensures that we can communicate with each other at the field level in real time. Now, OPC UA is added so that a consistent language can be established for the IT system. We have network adapters for Profibus to integrate existing installations into the cloud. We have industrial Wi-Fi, so that the mobile equipment I was showing you can also be connected. And finally, we have RFID and RTLS, that is, radio frequency identification and radio localization, so that all those means of production that are not able to communicate themselves can be synchronized with their digital twins. But I don't want to just talk about our well-established products, but I would also like to present some innovations to you that we have prepared for you here at SBS IPC Drive. First, we have RuggedCom RX 1400, which is a compact gateway to ultimately connect any applications with the cloud. For the upward communication with the cloud, the RX 1400 uses a standard protocol, MQTT for the experts amongst you. Downwards, it can collect data from control units, from field devices or sensors via OPC UA or S7 communication. And since it offers a variety of different interfaces, not just Ethernet bus, also Wi-Fi or LTE, it is a really universal device for a wide range of different requirements. And the really interesting thing about it, it doesn't have to be programmed. It can simply be engineered. That means you can create the address of the source device where you want to collect the data from and create the respective data points via engineering. And everything else happens with just a few mouse clicks. So, a clever solution to get started with your own digitalization. A second very important technology is time-sensitive networking, TSN, which we are also demonstrating in our booth. On the one hand, TSN offers a new level of real-time capability for communication. 
But at the same time, I can use the very same network to transport cloud data from the sensors up to the cloud systems to MindSphere. And for me, that's actually the decisive advantage, because for the first time, I can use a common network to serve a wide variety of applications with a wide range of quality of services without cloud communication putting automation somehow at risk. Because one thing is also clear, automation is always what has to work first and foremost. And we have a third innovation for you. Scenic NMS, a network management system. Cloud connectivity is well and good, but imagine you have connected thousands of devices with the cloud, with thousands of internet connections, which are all somehow running wildly from the field level up into the IT systems. Who's going to keep track of that? This is why we have developed Scenic NMS, which helps you monitor, document, and also configure the network not just the network components, that is, all the switches and routers and all the other things, but also the network users that are connected to this network. It is an important tool to really keep track of all that IoT architecture. Now, you might say, wow, what Siemens has to offer is actually quite complicated. So many different things. We are aware that all these technologies may not be easy to select or easy to use, but that has a lot to do with the complexity of the tasks. This is why we provide our expertise for your solution. Our professional services support you during the planning, design, commissioning, and troubleshooting of a network solution, and this will be as specific as your individual tasks and requirements. The second thing we offer is certification training. That is, we train your staff or your IT partners in using our products so that you can really get the most out of them, also performance-wise. And thirdly, we offer you a global partner network that realizes and implements your IoT architecture together with you on-site. Let me summarize briefly. Without communication, there is no digitalization. Digitalization is always about bringing together different pieces of data in new forms. And this means that this data has to be transported first, and for that, we need powerful networks. But since there are so many different requirements, remember, we were talking about it earlier, we offer more than 5,000 products that are as diverse as the requirements in your company. And thirdly, at Siemens, we don't leave you alone with all of that, but offer you advice and help for your IoT architecture. Industrial Communication, the information superhighway for the digital enterprise. Thank you. Siemens. Ingenuity for life.